Smart Cookies, Chapter 4, Hopper. When I open my eyes, I see Quinny running with a bunch of kids out on the field, and I'm still sitting here on the friendship bench with Caitlin, who's not even my friend. The yard guard's screechy whistle pricks at my ears. Recess is over. Caitlin grabs the smart list back from me, scrunches it in tiny, into a tiny ball in her fist, and leaves. Everybody gets in line. I want to talk to Quinny. I want to say sorry for ignoring her before, but she's surrounded by other kids by the time I get to the line. Maybe I can catch her in the hall before class starts. I try to, but there's there's still too many kids around her talking in a tornado of words. Then Miss Flavio starts class and everyone has to be quiet again. In math, we begin a unit on decimals and Quinny gets this zombie look on her face. In social studies, we split up into small groups to start a project on Alaskan Inuits, and Miss Flavio doesn't put Quinny in my group. In art, we draw fruit bowls, and Mr. Diaz puts Quinny on a private island since she talks more than she draws. In chorus, I'm in the back row, and Quinny is up front, too far away to talk to. Miss Bing tells me to stand up straight. That's pretty much all she ever says to me. We've been doing a lot of extra chorus practices lately because the winter holiday assembly is coming up and our grade is singing jingle bells and dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Today in chorus, Miss Bing is picking people to do the special instruments part. and She picks Quinny to do the wood block for jingle bells. She always gives the special parts to the same bunch of kids that she likes best. I'm not one of them. Quinny gets so excited, she starts shaking and squealing and hopping up and down. I look over at her, but when she, her eyes notice mine, they go cold and look away. Wait, Big Mouth got picked to make extra noise? What a surprise, says Alex, and people around him laugh because people around Alex always laugh when he makes dumb comments. It's one of the perks of being Alex Delgado. Quinny hollers out the words to Jingle Bells as she bangs the wooden block. <laughs> I mumble the words as I slouch in the back. I glance at the tall, quiet girl at the end of my row who slouches even more than me and picks at her nails. Her name is Jupiter and she doesn't even sing. She just mouths the words. Juniper is lucky since Miss Bing notices her even less than she notices me. After chorus, Quinny keeps ignoring me for the rest of the afternoon. I decide to be patient. She and I will ride the bus home together. We have assigned seats right next to each other, so I'll have the chance to make up with her then, if only I knew what to say.